Coming up in today's programme, Suffolk school children learn about architecture in an aircraft museum, investigate novel structures and build on their experience. Sometimes a particular curriculum topic does not readily appear to lend itself to a school trip. Equally, a potential venue may appear only to be relevant to one specialist subject. Today's school trip is an example of lateral thinking. The Imperial War Museum in Duxford is famous as Europe's premier museum of aircraft and aviation history. The heritage site began as an airfield in the First World War and played a vital role as an RAF fighter station in the second. There are also very strong connections with the American Air Force, which once used it as a base. Duxford is not an obvious place to visit to learn about architecture and the building of structures. But in today's trip, a primary class learns about the problems associated with constructing aircraft hangars and then gets an opportunity to design and build one for themselves. Duxford houses the Imperial War Museum's collection of historic aircraft. Year six, from St Mary's Roman Catholic Primary School in Ipswich, have come with their teacher, Jill Sandvig, for a day of structured learning. I was particularly interested in Duxford because they cover an area of the curriculum which is not usually done by external visits. I've never taught structures before and so I was using it at the beginning, right at the beginning of our topic as a, um, a learning point for me as well as having a shared experience that we could build on for the children. So has anybody got any idea what a structure might be? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at, yes. Is it something that's been built? Something that's been built, that's good, yeah, very good. Everything around us is a structure. Everything, including all of you standing here, you're all structures. All the buildings that we are in or around are structures. All the aeroplanes and other aircraft that we'll see, they're all structures. Because a structure is just something bigger that's made out of small pieces joined together. One of the things we're so trying to I do with something like the structures activity is to open up the fact that, yes, this is a museum and it's a museum about, to a great extent, about conflict. But that's not all you can learn about here. There's an enormous amount of science and technology you can do. Another enthusiastic fan of Duxford is architect Maxwell Hutchinson. I love going to Duxford and I'm a lifelong pacifist, so I hardly go for the aeroplanes. Although I do like an airliner or two. But you see the history of structures dating almost back to the First World War. And since then, there have been enormous innovations on how we enclose and cover space. The reason that Duxford is such a good place to do this is that we have a wide variety of uh, building structures and also the aircraft, the aeroplanes and all the airframes and so on uh, that we can compare and contrast. Started off in the morning with a tour of the site, looking particularly at all the building structures as we went along. The children were encouraged to look at the shapes, um, triangles and squares and the different structures that the buildings contained. If you look up at the building first, what shapes can you see lots of? Triangles, yes. Hundreds and hundreds of triangle shapes. All across there, across there, even down the walls, look. If you go inside old and Victorian right factories, the they're full of the very large um, po posts and stanchions so and so on. That, really that didn't matter too much because you weren't trying to move shape. large wingspans around inside. Ah. But as soon as you get even a small aeroplane, you've got quite a wide wingspan to deal with. Has anybody ever been up in the attic in their house? What do you notice up there? Lots of wood. Is it hard to move around in your attic? Yes, because it's all this wood crisscrossing over. And it's like this. It's making that strong structure. Very similar sorts of things can be seen in the airframes as can be seen in the frames and structures of the buildings. What do you think goes just here and one over there? 
the propellers with the engine, and the engine's really big and heavy. So the structure holding it up has to be strong. So can you see any triangle shapes in there? Yeah. What about the, the shape of the tubes that the triangles are made out of? What shape are they? Cylinders, that's right, long cylinder tubes. And tubes are hollow, so they're not too heavy. So you can make a really strong structure like that that supports the heavy engine, but it's still very strong and stiff and stable, and it's made out of tubes. So tubes are very strong shapes as well. Next stop on the tour is the American Air Museum, built as a memorial to the 30,000 Americans who died flying from the United Kingdom in the Second World War. A completely different sort of building and structure that we're inside now. We call this building the American, American Air Museum is completely different in its structural methods to all the others that are on the site. So we've now seen frames made of triangles. We've seen what I would call mass structures. That's a mass of things all piled on top of each other, the bricks. And here we've got a shell. The imaginative Norman Foster designed building won a prize from the Royal Institute of British Architects. Former RIBA president Maxwell Hutchinson enthuses. Aircraft hangars are an unusual structural challenge because they have to accommodate aircraft. And aircraft have huge wingspans and they have to be able to move about in the hangar and they can't have anything coming down in front of the wings because they need to go in and out. Maybe one of the unfortunate things is that we don't see these hangars without the aircraft in. I've been privileged to go in and see these spaces. They are awe-inspiring spaces. There are spaces which break all the rules. They look like they're being held up by sky hooks. But inevitably, it is the aircraft that proved to be the biggest draw for the children. We have um, a boy in our class who is not a high attainer. He's quite quiet in class. He doesn't put forward his own views. Duxford yesterday was just a revelation, both for him and it was good for us to see him in action because we know that he spends an awful lot of his time at home building these enormous Lego Star Wars models. Well, to go to a place where there's aeroplanes for a start, certainly the likes of the Blackbird, was just awe-inspiring for him. He had the most wonderful morning. He soaked everything up. And then in the afternoon, he got the best thing, an hour to play with connects and build things. The lecturing is over. The practical task for the afternoon is to design and build a hangar big enough to house a Vulcan bomber, or at least a 150th scale model. Can we use that? Yeah, so like these are triangles, and then we can like sort of get stuff across the top, can we, Toby? Architects don't just make structures attractive. Good architects have an intuitive understanding of structure. He'll be so proud of us when they try this. Yeah, he'll be so proud of us when we see each other trying. The challenge of designing structures to enclose aeroplanes, very big objects, forces us to throw away traditional thinking of columns, arches and beams. We have to start to think about structures that carry huge loads over very wide areas in triangulated and trussed ways, all of which are strong, robust and rigid. Cool, that's clever. Is that what you did, um, Toby? Yeah. Does my need to bit here? One, two, three, four. You've only got four and she said it needs to be five, didn't she? So you need another one like that. The interesting part was the very visual learners were scattered about the more successful groups and I suspect that's because they had been looking very hard at what he'd told them in the morning and were able to simply translate that from the shape on the ceiling to the shape that they were making. Some of the other types of learners, listening skills people, found that less easy to do because of course what they hadn't got is they hadn't got that strong visual reference. What about this one? Is it doing anything? No. It won't work, will it? Because it doesn't... 
Hmm. So it's beginning to be quite good, but it's still very, very flexible. Yes. I think the wonderful thing is that the children who normally shine at all these things so marvellously in school were not the ones who shone necessarily yesterday and there was a, a real sense of achievement for the children who perhaps don't normally stand out as being terrifically successful. Right, excellent. This is two teams working together to build one finished hangar. So who's got the aeroplane? Can you bring it over and see if it fits inside? I know it's still a little bit um, unstable, isn't it? But it's better than it was. Can you bring that in here? Will it, will it go in? Yes, it will. That's good. And if you put that Understanding back, of structure back, is absolutely intrinsic to the creation of good architecture. Integrate it properly and understand it as part of the design concept, you'll get an architectural miracle. And if we filled all those gaps in with concrete... If I said I was going to talk to you about structures, you would, you would turn off, wouldn't you? Think it was going to be really tedious and boring. But it is a very, very exciting and practical way of applying mathematics and geometry. Can anyone remember any of the special words that he used to do with the structures? How did he describe our structure? The visit to Duxford has inspired Jill Sandvig. Back at school, she is running through what her class has learned. How does that relate to structures? How does that relate to what we learned yesterday? David? And that's the one that looks a bit like that rather than the triangles that we'd see that looked like that that many of you built into your connect structures in the afternoon. The next plan is um, for this morning for us to try and record some of the shapes of the structures we saw. And then what I want to do is take those shapes out into our own environment, take the children out into our own streets and into our own um, school grounds and see whether they can then find any of those structures in our local environment so that they really are able to attach their learning to something concrete for themselves. So take a look around you, tell me if you can see anything at all that looks in any way, shape or form like anything you saw yesterday. Oliver? Um, the benches. The benches. What is it about the benches that you recognised from yesterday, Oliver? Um, it's got the triangle um, thing so it can hold. Why is that important? Because um, people sit on it, if, if they just sit on it and it's straight, something it could break and then... Absolutely. So it needs to take quite a lot of weight, that table, doesn't it? It needs to take six of you at least, which is like an elephant. What else do you notice? Toby? The goalpost is sort of triangular. Why is the goalpost triangular? My own knowledge and understanding of structures support? has now grown incredibly. I learned a tremendous amount. I learned what the basic structures are. Um, I learned some of the names that I wasn't aware of. And I think that's, that's one of the real benefits of going to places like Duxford that have a very good and clear educational provision in that it's as good for the teachers as it is for the, for the pupils. You can find further information on this and other similar school trips by looking under the Resources and Support Materials section on our website www.teachers.tv forward slash worth the trip.